Hi, I'm Austin Lee. I'm a computer engineering senior here at the uh, University of Oklahoma, and today I'm going to show you an efficient packing method called bundling. Now, the reason to use the packing method like bundling is so that when you go on your trip, whether it's overseas or just flying across the country for a weekend or a week, is you want to be able to take as much as you can without uh, having to check a bag, because if you are going somewhere, you've checked a bag, you're going to, chances are they're going to lose your luggage. And you don't want to show up at your location, not have your luggage for a week. But if you're coming back, and you go, feel, feel free to go ahead and check your luggage, because when you get back, you're going to be home. You're going to have extra clothes and things to wear. So our goal in this is going to be to pack as much as we can in a standard carry-on luggage size. And before you take your trip, make sure you always check with your airline. Uh, find out what their carry-on dimensions are. Usually they're given in linear inches. Now what that means is they'll say something like 45 inches. So you're going to measure the width, the depth, and the length of your bag. Add those all up together and as long as that's under the length requirements or the size requirements for your airline, you should be good. Now this, like I said, is a standard carry-on luggage size. And if you've got a, a compression uh, zipper on there, go ahead before we do this and open this up. It'll help things out a little bit. Now, to do this, flip your luggage over so you've got a nice hard surface that'll show you the footprint of your bag. And in this bag, we're going to try to get about nine pairs of pants, a pair of shorts, nine shirts, several pairs of socks, two pairs of shoes, and a toiletries kit. Now, of course, your packing may vary, but this is just to show you exactly how much you can get in a small bag like this. So the first thing you want to do is start with your pants. I like to start with the dress pants first. This way they're on the outside of the bundle, meaning they have the, uh, the, basically the most curve, so it won't put as many creases into your pants. So take your first pair of pants, line the hem of it up, or the, the belt part of it up, with the edge of your bag, maybe come in just a little bit and run the length of the pants off to the side. Now you're going to take the next pair of pants, do the exact same thing, but coming in the opposite direction. And then just continue down through your stack of pants. If you're careful about this when you're doing it, and make sure you smooth everything out as you go along, when you get to your destination, your clothes will still be relatively wrinkle-free, assuming that you put them in when they were wrinkle-free. <laughs> so back and forth, back and forth, and if you see that one side starts to get a little thicker than the other, you can flip the pants back and forth this way as well, and that'll help uh, distribute out the spacing some. And the whole time, make sure you're staying within the front and back, and then that the belt parts are staying in within the side to side. Okay, that's it for our pants. Now, if you've got shorts that you'd like to take along, or ladies, this works really good for skirts, you can go ahead and take these. If they, if they fit within the length of the bag, go ahead and lay them in nice and flat like that. If they're a bit longer, go ahead and turn them sideways run them off this way a little bit, and you'll see why here shortly. All right, next we'll do our shirts. Whether it's long sleeve, short sleeve, uh, dress shirts, button-up shirts, t-shirts, you're going to do the exact same thing. So lay them out across your, your luggage. We'll start the other way so you can see this. Take the collar of your shirt, this time line it up just inside the edge, this side and take your sleeves and go out along the pant line. Your next shirt will do the exact same thing, just facing the other way. Again, make sure the collar is just on the inside of that edge. And then go one by one through all your shirts. Take the time to really, if you really want them to be wrinkle free, smooth them out, get everything nice and laid out. Now, while you're packing, make sure you're thinking about a couple of things. One, what you'll need that you can't buy there. Two, what you'll need that you can buy there. Uh, I personally 
would never fly with uh, large things of soap or shampoo. I will always keep a small thing of soap, shampoo, toothpaste, and my toothbrush in my uh, laptop bag that you can carry on along with a regular carry-on bag. And then when I get to my destination, I'll buy all of that. A couple reasons for that. One, you don't want to worry about your stuff exploding and your clothes getting soaked in your soap and shampoo. And two, it just saves weight and space, and it's not really all that expensive to buy them when you get over there. Okay, now that I've got all of the shirts, I'm going to start with the second shirt down. Just grab the tail of it and fold it over so that this edge that's folded now is just on the inside edge of the luggage. Take the next shirt, bring it on over, and then if you can, take up the, the sleeves. This works particularly good with the longer sleeves and just bring them up in here, smooth everything out, make sure everything looks nice. And then continue on with the next shirt down. If you do have to roll up some of the edges of your shirts, like this one here rolled up with it, just make sure it comes over smoothly, doesn't get really bunched up. But then again, if that part's gonna be tucked into your pants, you're not terribly worried about that anyways. And again, stop every now and then, pull up some of the sleeves, spread them out nicely in here. And looks like we've got two shirts left, so we'll just pull them both over. Okay, once you've kind of packed it down a little bit, pushed out some of the air, you'll start with your pants. So grab one of the top ones, make sure your sleeves come along and don't get wrinkled up in there. And then one from the other side. And continue back and forth here. As you can see, this method of packing doesn't take all that long, particularly if you've already picked out what you want. Um, your first time packing for your trip, this will take a little bit longer. You may have to unpack it and try to resituate some items. Or you may have to decide that some items just won't fit because you've just decided to take too much. But once you get uh, what it is that you're going to be taking with you, you can see that you can pack this very quickly. And what you're left with is a nice little bundle. For right now, we're going to set this off to the side, flip the luggage over, and the first thing you're going to want to do is to put your shoes, your toiletries, and other small items in the bottom. Uh, especially with rolling luggage, there's these rigid edges in here that cause uh, there to be a lot of space taken up if you don't pack that with the smaller items. And since we're trying to take up as much space as possible in here, we're going to fill that area first and make a nice little bed for the rest of the clothes to go on. Now, if you're packing shoes, don't forget that there's a lot of space inside your shoes. Take your socks, take your underwear, whatever else you may want to, anything delicate even and pack that up inside the shoes. I'm gonna go ahead and fill these with socks. When you put them in here, you're gonna to want to set them up in one of the corners and try to fill as much space as possible. Think like you're playing Tetris, like you did when you were a kid. All right, so now we've got those in there. We're going to take the remaining socks, underwear, whatever else you may have, put that in the middle, and form a nice little bed for your bundle to go into. This will be the toiletry kit. Okay, and what you're left with is this. Now onto the bundle. Carefully pick up your bundle. I may have made this one a little wide here, so we may have to squish a little, but you'll see it for the most part. It'll set right in. You can tuck the edges in, and if you've already unzipped your compression zipper, that'll pull right up around your bundle. Now, you can close up your luggage, zip it up, zip up your compression bundle, uh, which we're going to do for this, and you can see you have a perfectly packed bag of luggage. It's not terribly heavy. You should be able to get that into your overhead compartment. And the one problem with this is that if you're going to be making several hops, say you're going from one location, staying a couple of days, going to another location, you have to start worrying about every time you unpack or every time you get to a location and you want to change clothes, 
you're going to have to pull your bundle out, undo everything, pick out what you want, rebundle everything, put it back in. Now, obviously, that didn't take a lot of time, but if you want to save yourself a little time, make yourself some small bundles. Prepare ahead, pick out one or two outfits for the next couple of days, make them into a second, smaller bundle, and put them on top of the first one. That way, whenever you get to your location, pop this open, grab what you need, close it back up, and you're good to go. So with this, we have nine pair of pants, nine shirts, not to mention what you were wearing on the trip, and you should be able to make plenty of com uh, combinations of your clothes to last you for however long the trip is. I personally traveled for six weeks in France with nothing but this suitcase itself and a little shoulder carry-on bag for my laptop. That's it. Happy travels. Thank you.